Hello, today we're going to have a look at some new features that came out in version 9.08. The first thing we'll look at is creating a HTML pedigree page for your website. This is available from the tree tab. You'll see two buttons at the top, HTML pedigree and HTML pedigree collection. The first option creates a single web page for a single animal and the second option creates a registry of all the animals in your database. Let's get started. First of all, choose an animal from your search list. Then go to the tree tab. Above the tab, click the HTML pedigree button. This form opens, allowing you to select the options for your pedigree. Let's have a look at the options. The first one is style. You can create a branch pedigree or a box pedigree. A branch pedigree has the names connected by lines like this, whereas a box pedigree has all the information in boxes. You can also choose the number of generations from zero up to six. If you choose zero, you can create an information web page which doesn't have a pedigree but has all the other information fields or up to six if you want to show a lot of generations. The next option is organisation. These details are your personal web, uh, personal email and other details that you have saved in your program. Click edit details to open your settings form where you can edit those details. Once you save, they will be used throughout your program. Or you can uncheck the box and not show details at all. You can also show your logo and you can change your logo here. The next two sections define what fields you want to list with your animals. There's the subject animal or the main animal at the top of your pedigree and the generation details which are all the other animals in your pedigree. If you choose the fields option, you can select the fields with this button. In this database, some of the field options don't appear because they're custom fields and the user hasn't used those fields. You can select all fields by clicking this button, but I would only advise this with the main animal as there won't be enough room. When you've selected the fields you want, click done and the program will save your settings for every pedigree after that. The next option is all details from the first tab. These are the details you see when you look in your normal program and open the first tab. These ones here. You can also choose whether you want to show pictures for the subject animal and the generation animals. The subject picture will appear quite large at the top and the generation pictures will appear as small thumbnails. The user can click on the thumbnail to view a larger picture. And click the back button to go back to the pedigree. This is the same with the main picture at the top. Now let's have a look at the second option, which is to create a HTML collection. You don't need to select an animal for this, as it's going to create a pedigree for every animal. The same form opens. You may want to keep your collection separate from other pedigrees so you can choose your own folder. By default it will use the HTML folder that's used by your program and will create a subfolder with your organisation name or stud name. You can select all the other names just like before and they will apply to every pedigree in the collection. Click create to begin the process. It could take a while to create the collection um, depending on your computer's processor. Then an index page will open in your default browser. So these are the names of all the animals in your database in alphabetical order. I've also included the registration numbers so you can search for animals in that way. On a PC or Mac you can click Control F or Command F to search and a search box will open somewhere around your browser depending on what type you use. You can type some letters in there or numbers and it will highlight the result and you can use the arrows to move to different instances. When you click on a name, the pedigree will open with all the information and photos that you've put in your settings. You can browse the pictures like before. One thing that's different with a pedigree register 
is that the names are actually hyperlinks. So you can click on any name in the tree and it will go to that pedigree. Use the back button to go back to your original pedigree. So you can browse from one pedigree to another. You can also use the index button at the bottom to take you to the original index. The index page could be very long, but that doesn't affect the speed of opening pages since the web server does all the processing, not your computer. You can also search by registration number by typing in some numbers. It will find anywhere that that ap appears in the page. Using the arrows again to move to each search result. So we've created our pedigree, pedigree register. So what do we do now to get it on the internet? Let's have a look at the files. Go to View, Folders and HTML Pedigrees from your menu. This opens your program's HTML folder. So we have a folder called Images, which has all the photos for our website, and then all the individual HTML pages which are very small, so they won't take up very much room. So all we need to do now is to upload the whole folder onto our website and link to it from our main page. Uh, you can use an FTP program like FileZilla. So once you've set that up, you open your HTML, public HTML folder and drop your whole pedigree register into that folder. You can see here how quickly that's uploading. Just waiting for it to finish. Okay, now we need to create a link. So the link should look something like this. If it's in your root public HTML, you put your website name followed by the folder. You don't have to actually link to any file in the folder because it contains uh, an index HTML file which will open automatically when you link to the folder. I hope you found today's video helpful. If you need further assistance, Please don't hesitate to contact me at support at